for somebody else. In fact, right now, all three signs are changing at a rate that's too rapid for the state law, and the state is supposed to enforce it, and they don't. That's kind of the way it is. And that's what's written in the uh, ordinance now, or the one that's proposed, uh, which means that it's not gonna get enforced anyways. You know, because the DOT, like you say, they have too much on their plate. Unless somebody complains, they're not gonna come in and do anything. And even if they complain, I mean, when Cam and Lumber was doing those blue lights flashing all over the place, that was kind of dangerous. It took, what, 10, 10 guys from the DOT working on that uh, railroad crossing you know, to repave it, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, the following week, uh, he was conforming with the sign ordinance, and then slowly started changing it again. But, <clears throat> you know, they're not looking to uh, run around enforcing any sign laws, the DOT is. So if it's gonna get enforced in any rate, it'll have to probably be done locally or you have what you have now. That's what's gonna happen. So moratoriums, pushing things off, no lighting in the village. I'm more concerned about the village. I'm not born and bred in, in Belgrade. Belgrade has always been a destination to go to the lakes. And of course, it's also been an industrial base. Couple of lumber yards, uh, concrete place, you know, it's got that. But the local people everywhere tend to misjudge what other people see in their own communities. And Belgrade has a golf course that's number one in the state. It has the lakes and it's charming village and whatnot. <clears throat> I, I equate it closer to uh, that list that you provided. It's kind of interesting. Putting a rundle there. I would equate it to um, a Gunkwit more than a Rundle, you know, because a Gunkwit's got this charming little downtown area, and it's got a playhouse, and uh, you know, a lot of places to stay, and whatnot. It's kind of similar in that regard to Belgrade. It's got some waterfront properties uh, on the ocean. Belgrade has waterfront properties. You know, it, when you look at what you want to maintain. You know, you, you know, you capture those things and you make that sign ordinance reflect what you want to get out of it. But this little triangle here, from 135 down to probably only as far as Gagney's, that's probably the only place you really want commercial development. And you have to find a way to control that. And unless you get a zoning ordinance, this map lets you do it because it's been approved. Mm -hmm. This map, in one of the documents that I submitted, is a map overlay onto this map. And it says this district is this, this, and that. And in the uh, listing, I have district number one, district number two, district number three. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the the fine-tuning, I think, that happens to make this ordinance be whatever it is that you want, I, I think I've, I've put the format together whether it's what you want or not, that probably requires some meetings, mm -hmm. workshops, whatever you want to call it, public hearings. So if you're not ready to go for this whole package, okay. But don't don't let that crazy ordinance it, go through. Yeah, it, um, my compliments, by the way, on your first draft. You, um, it's a good first start. Mm -hmm. the, um, but I, I want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Um, and first off, the commercial development review, review ordinance and the sign standard that's in what's proposed, it's too late to change that. It, we would have had to. Can you put a moratorium? Could, the, could, could you put the uh, select board apply a moratorium to that ordinance separately? That's a good right. question. And I, think, and, I, and I think if it take this, we need. Think would we, result we, uh, in the uh, defeat uh, of the ordinance. The planning board needs to chairman. You need to go to the next uh, selectman meeting and invite the rest of us on, and we're going to talk about what the priority is, and we can have Mr. Lasad there talk this out with the select people. We need to have a special meeting with the select people to talk this out as to what how uh, we're going to how we're going to how we're going to pursue it. Mm -hmm. We got we got to lay it out. You know, he is a good, you know, Mr. Lasada has presented a good idea, you know, it makes sense. 
maybe the selectmen can do it, I don't know. But to have the conversation, you know, in different, different places, different times, it's not gonna work. We gotta get together on a special meeting with the select people. If you can address and bring that to the select people, you know, informally, fine, whatever. I think that's where we gotta go. I'm not sure so, if this is what you're suggesting, Pete, but it, I, I, when I was thought about this, I was thinking that we have two options in front of us. One is, I think, what Pete's suggesting, that we go back to the select board and uh, say to them, basically, this is what's on our plate. Do you want us to get a uh, prioritized assigned ordinance over the shoreland zoning ordinance? Or our other option is to put our heads down and work this out amongst ourselves. You know, um, the, uh, I mean, regardless, whichever ordinance we decide to work on in the next couple of months, say our first, we, we can work on both or we can work on just one and then take up the other later. But um, nothing's gonna be ready to go to the voters until next November at the earliest, I would think. Um, and um, if we're going to do it a decent job, and and I the um, I mean it's so late in the game that you know doing a moratorium I don't think I think that would just incredibly confuse the uh, voters. Yeah, but since they voted to let us move ahead with this mm -hmm. on this section, did they take on the responsibility of setting that section aside? Well, I didn't hear anything to that effect. But, uh, uh, but I can see where, I, I can understand where Mr. Lasada is you know, reading it that way. Again, I'm coming back to to make it, to move faster on it than what you're talking about is we need to have a special meeting uh, within the next two weeks or whatever, the next, get on get on the uh, agenda for the select board and, and, and get it done quick. Find out which way we're going to go and talk about it. Either, it's either that. Or we say to the select board, our next agenda item, a major item, is the Shoreland Zoning Board. It's been on our schedule for the last six, two years. That's our next thing. After that, we will address the signage ordinance. Because my personal opinion is, the signage issue was not even an issue to the town until a month ago. Now all of a sudden, it's like, Hurry up and do it, uh, it's top priority. I don't know how we get from not being a priority at all to being, oh, you gotta get working on it. My, my thing is we could just as well tell the selectmen, we're gonna do Sherwin zoning next and then we will take up the sign ordinance. And but I agree. But they wanna tell us different But I agree, agree with you. Yeah. But that's why we have to, you know, you know, the planning board and the selectmen, we have to have a special meeting basically, whether it's on a, on a schedule on a selectmen meeting night or not, to, to hash it up. We're at that point. I, 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 um, I'm somewhat sympathetic to Mr. Lassard's point that um, the, I, I mean, on one hand, if town didn't have a signed ordinance, I don't, I don't know anybody would necessarily notice the difference, frankly, in town, um, because we don't have one now, and we've never had one. Um, the, the sign standards in the commercial development review ordinance only apply to those projects that trigger that ordinance. And there, you know, there, as many businesses get developed in Belgrade that don't trigger the ordinance as do, uh, if not more. And so, um, the uh, certainly if somebody converted an existing, you know, uh, is, well, enough of that, but it, you know, I don't, I don't need to go down that road anymore what triggers the ordinance, but the, uh, uh, so, you know, just so you understand, it isn't every business that's established in town that triggers the ordinance where uh, the commercial development review ordinance as it's written now, the current version or the version that's, uh, you know, amended. We didn't change substantively the applicability section at all, um, the, uh, or proposed changes to it. Um, so, but um, I understand you what you wish to have the sign ordinance basically supersede um, the sign standards in the commercial development review ordinance. This discussion though kind of reminds me of healthcare discussion. You know, are we going to get rid of the Affordable Care Act before there's a replacement, or are we going to have a replacement before we get rid of it? 
And uh, I would argue that if we're going to get rid of the sign standards in the Commercial Development Review Ordinance, we not do so until such time as we have something to replace it that we're, you know, all amenable to and, and, and is, you know, well drafted and, and something we can recommend to the voters. Um, I, I, um, I mean, I, I don't know how else to proceed myself. Yeah. I guess I'm still thinking that going to the uh, select board is, a, is an appropriate next step for us, for, for me especially, I suppose, to go to them and say, um, just so you understand, in context of, of the work that Mr. Westside and Mr. Ketchum have done so far, in the context of that, that we do have a priority of work to, to, to do in a limited time to do it. And that is, so far, it's to work on the Shoreland Zone Ordinance. Um, if they want us to, to not do that now, and then reprioritize our work, I would like to know that. I would like them to understand that we have an approach to what we're doing, and we're trying to live up to what the voters have voted for and what we've already agreed to. Yeah, I mean, listening to the tape, obviously, they did not discuss that. Um, that wasn't part of the consideration in their uh, of that debate. Um, it was not. So I think it would be it would be healthy for the select board to understand that we are mindful of our uh, an already set list of things to accomplish in this next year. And I want to be fair and realistic though to, to, to Mr. Lassard and, and others who want the sign ordinance to, to get set in its fair shape. You know, I want to make sure we set realistic expectations when we can work on it, uh, when it could go before the voters, what it takes to get it to the voters. Um, those are important things. We <coughs> volunteered and already put in a lot of effort. Yes. I mean, we have an advantage, you know, th this kind of reminds me of the Commercial Development Review Ordinance uh, and how we undertook that. We did that with the help of KB Cogs, you know, as basic, in this case, Mr. Lassard would be basically our consultant. Um, and, and, uh, the, uh, and, you know, we may not agree, but, you know, at least uh, we have somebody to do the heavy lifting uh, versus, our, you know, uh, us personally, you know, in terms of drafting and the like. Um, so that, that's a, an advantage. I don't know, you know, if anybody's given any thought to when we undertake the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, you know, are we going to do that all in-house here? Are we going to try to go to the well one more time at KB Cog? I, I think we've worn out our welcome there. I would think we can handle that ourselves. Well, I, I've assumed so, as long as you're on the board and, and the rest of you are on the board that have more experience with it than I. Yeah, my thinking about Shoreland Zone ordinance would be leaning heavily on, on Rich. Mm -hmm. He's a set I mean, we have the benefit of the state guidelines. Uh, I, I have yet to, it was so long ago that I glanced at them, I haven't read them, but I don't know, you know, how much guidance there is there. But. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so so that's that's kind of the outline of stuff. So I want to make sure we're on the same page with some stuff, because you asked some fair questions. Should there be work on a signed ordinance? You know what happens to the section of the current uh, commercial? Well, I, I would recommend deleting it from the uh, development review ordinance uh, at this point because the problem is is that you're implementing something. Somebody's going to put up a sign, and then uh, you know six months to a year later, it's going to change, and you mm -hmm. know just going to be an unnecessary headache. So well, so if you don't have an ordinance now, it's not needed. So the way, the way I understand it, it would be grandfathered. Is, well, yeah, but I mean, if the standards, for instance, at 32 square feet, here, here's the part that I'm looking at. 32 square feet, uh, hand and lumber signs 100 square feet. Uh, and then they have a second sign. Uh, you're allowing two signs together on a, uh, uh, on a single property exceeding, not to exceed 32 square feet. Uh, does that mean that uh, somebody's gonna look at that uh, building that's been closed down and was, uh, uh, you know, the uh, furniture? Yeah, all right. And you know, are they, 
they going to spend, what, I don't know what the price is now, $300,000 to buy that thing and put up another business and then say, what, 32 square feet? Which place? That's the print shop place. place. Yeah. The Emerald? Envelope. Oh, the envelope yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. Chemistry uh, Stewart's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hammond owns that. Yeah. yeah, well, they built it originally, but then uh, there was this, the last uh, tenant in there was making uh, furniture for right. commercial goods. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, is somebody going to look at that and say, what? I don't forget it. You know, so you're going to look at a million dollar property development that's going to go by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Are they going to want to go for a variance? No. Nobody's going to go for a variance for a sign because it, in this particular case, they might qualify for hardship because 32 square feet, it's still 55 miles an hour there. Uh, the, some of the documents that I gave you was looking at recognition time at certain rates of speed. You know, it just, uh, it becomes a hurdle for somebody to look at you don't need. And at the same time, that ordinance is gonna have somebody put up an electronic sign in the village. I mean, there's always this risk and there's no permitting process built into that thing, so all they're going to do is turn in a piece of paper to Gary, and as long as they meet the dimensional requirements, he can't say anything. Well, I think we're still not on the same page here in terms of understanding well, the, the, the I mean, no, that. In terms of the scope of the commercial development review, review ordinance, it's very limited. So, for example, your, your concern is one of your concerns it has to do with the Belgrade Lakes Village. The, um, and some, you know, it would have to be one of the existing businesses putting up a new sign for your worst fear to come, come to fruition. Because if somebody was to establish a new business, only then would, they, would it fall under the Commercial Development Review Ordinance. So, for example, if um, Day Store wanted to put up a digital, electronic digital sign, uh, um, we have nothing to say about it. We, we, we don't have any ordinance. Yeah, so right. We don't have any ordinance, property. and they don't fall under the Commercial right. Development Review Ordinance. <clears throat> now, if saying. somebody, but if somebody else, so th this all goes to your point about we should do away with the sign standard. Yeah. Immediately you in the commercial development review ordinance, it doesn't make any sense. It would out. leave the town more vulnerable. You need a permitting process separate from what this board does. You know, and every yeah, no, I, I agree. But my point is, you're mixing the two together, and so that it all goes to your po major point of um, doing away or more or somehow eliminating the sign standard from the commercial development review ordinance. I mean, it's too late to do that. It's going to the voters as is, but the, um, but uh, it, it well, you know, you, you, we're, we're talking it, about two different things. Is it, I mean, on the 20th, they voted to allow us to do this. So in my mind, they set that portion aside until some decision was made here. So you could just say, we don't have time to work on it. It would be better to remove it from well, that warrant. The, the subsequent to the, your meeting with them, they voted four to nothing to move it forward uh, as as written. So um, you know it that warrant article is written. It's been accepted by the select board, and it's scheduled for public hearing. So um, now, if we change that, it would kill that ordinance, and it would do far more damage to this town than the fact that we have a have a sign standard in there that you might not like. Maybe after we're all done, we won't like. But, you know, my recommendation is we leave that, let that ordinance go into effect with the sign standard. Once we get the sign ordinance written, uh, we eliminate the sign standard in the commercial development review ordinance and say, see signs ordinance. And, and that way we have a smooth transition rather than uh, just causing all kinds of confusion. And, and frankly, confusion is not business friendly, uh, being business friendly. I mean, that's one of the things we need to be concerned well, like about you said, here. Well, you have no sign ordinance now. So if, there's, if there was a way to eliminate it from that development review, then take it out, you know, because it doesn't change anything. You're looking to make a change. It does. It changes things a lot because. But, but hold on. It's getting late here. All right. 
and I got to leave pretty soon, but you know, uh, Mr. Chairperson, you, you suggested that we got to get, meet with, get together with the uh, select people and that these, these conversations can go on there in front of them and, mm -hmm. and, and then they're going to give us some direction here. So, sorry to cut, out, cut in there like that, but you know, I got to get going pretty soon. It's getting, it's nine o'clock. and you know, it's so. getting late. So yeah, I would like to get on the next select board meeting and present this topic to them so they understand where we're coming from. I really want you to understand that, like, like it was mentioned, that the warrant article, what was approved to go for the warrant articles has already happened. So a suggestion about removing a section of it now, to me, it would be very harmful. Um, well, no, forget that. It can't be done. We've already, it's already been approved to go forward as is. End of story, right? So they well, it, and it would be harmful in the sense that it's just one small part of the ordinance. The bigger, the bigger focus of the ordinance is protection of the water quality of the lights. It does a much better job of that than the current ordinance, which would, is what would remain in place if that ordinance didn't go forward at this time. Right. That's the trade-off. You're giving up better water quality protection. You're giving up better stormwater protection. You're giving up... Um, uh, well, we wouldn't have a light standard, a lighting standard, because there isn't one in the current uh, ordinance. Right. Assuming that it goes to the voters, it gets passed. Does the select board have the authority to set it aside after that? No. Set so aside no. the ordinance? Yeah, to create a moratorium on that sign ordinance. In other words, there is no sign ordinance now. Basically, if they put a moratorium on the newly uh, voted on an approved uh, ordinance, they're basically going back to where they were before by not honoring whatever the terms are. That would be the you're, only other way to do it. Yeah. Because I think that ordinance really does damage. The, not as much damage as not having it go forward. The fact of the matter is, if that ordinance doesn't go forward, the current ordinance remains in place. That requires no more a sign, no greater than 32 square feet and has since 2001. So, you know, I think the better path forward is to um, work on the sign ordinance. Once the sign ordinance is completed, if, whenever that's going to be, then make the transition so that all signs in town, not just the ones that, I mean, right now, a, a, a business that start, starts up in Belgrade, a small one, that doesn't trigger the commercial development review ordinance because of lack of size or whatever, um, they can do whatever they want for a sign. Um, the, uh, but if it, it allow the commercial development review ordinance to go into effect with its sign store, it's gonna be two or three projects at most that will be reviewed under it uh, over the course of the next year or so. And um, and then make the transition to the signed ordinance once once it's ready to go to the uh, once it's been ready to go and, and approved by the voters. So that ordinance is not a town wide ordinance. It's only when the uh, development review permit is required. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And not all commercial development needs a permit. Yeah. Correct. It, it's it's not like a zoning ordinance in that sense because. Uh, that applies to uh, zoning ordinance would apply to all new commercial or non-residential development. This only applies to a subset. That is an excellent question that you brought up. I'm glad you did. I hope that that the answer provides some context as to why we're approaching it from the perspective you presented so far. Does that help at all? Well, it does, but I think that uh, in light of that. Was a separate sign ordinance, regardless of the development review part of it. I think mm -hmm. that that would be a good thing for the town, uh, with regard to existing properties and all of these others. You know, because you look at a, you know, I was looking at that 32 square feet lighted signs. You know, the West Road. You know, near the golf course entrance. Why? Why would you want to do that? It doesn't make sense. You know, uh, nobody goes by that, and it's basically residential for, you know, from Castle Island Road down to the restroom. 
So those are the types of questions when we start looking at land use. Does this sign ordinance fit in? I don't think it fits in in a lot of places. And it needs to be fixed. And in your case, you're saying, well, unless that, that project gets reviewed, they can do whatever they want. See, that, that's a problem in my mind. That, that is a problem. Well, and I don't disagree. I, I, I've kind of come around to the point of view that having a sign ordinance, I'm not sure it's a priority, but because you know, I don't, I don't know that we've suffered as a result of uh, not having one up to, to now, but um, but eventually I think of having a sign ordinance that is town-wide in a, its applicability and deals with the you know situation you just described as well as others like it, uh, it would be probably a good thing. Um, the uh, um, I, but I, I would hate to see uh, some of the progress we've made lost because right. of this transition. And I'll just say this from my perspective, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater in this case because the commercial development review ordinance has a lot of good work in it already for other reasons other than the sign. So uh, I feel compelled myself to try to see this through. And if other ideas, such as a sign ordinance, come up that also makes sense, great. Um, we can work on that as priorities and time demand. You so, know, so Peter, uh, and following up on Pete's suggestion, too, about meeting with the select board, the other thing, too, that that would have the benefit of doing is um, I know from having run into Michael Barrett at the town office that they've been discussing uh, a recreational marijuana lounge and, and retail ordinance. Um, so yet another one. So that, and that may ray down on our head as well, and, and um, um, you know, that would just, uh, <laughs> that's just silliness. Yeah. So, you know, I, I feel that, or I would recommend, <laughs> I recommend that uh, a conversation take place that you know we get on the select board agenda or whatever the next meeting is to discuss this. And I think that's fair to, that's fair to all in that setting setting some sort of priority about this this effort as well in the context of other things that are going on is a real important thing. You know, you know, one thing too, we're talking, so far we've only talked about the sort of interface between a, a town-wide signing ordinance and the more limited sign standards in the commercial development review ordinance. We've got to remember, there's sign standards in the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance too. So we, we need to deal with all three. We yeah, need to deal, deal with all three. Your, your, your ordinance did include the Shoreland and I think that's the place to do it as well. It's a good point. Uh, you know, you could, if you've got a sign ordinance, we, we could, um, well, put conservation this way. and shoreland. It's yeah, six square feet. We could get rid of the sign stands in the shoreland zone if it specifically dealt with sign stands in the shoreland zone. Yeah, and that's exactly the way, you know, I mean, I did that for 33 years. I mean, I, I didn't go look for a, any kind of planning documents. I was looking for uh, a, a, a sign code. When I, put these things together, I, I grabbed a half a dozen sign codes in towns that I thought that were similar in uh, you know, what their attractions were, the type of highways that went through the towns and whatnot. And uh, in other cases, I got more urban uh, areas because I knew they had better language. You know, there's a lot of definitions in there. The thing you want to do is you don't want to leave any stone unturned. You want to cover your bases everywhere. You know, there's not going to be any questions. Agreed. Very much agreed. So, you know, that's why it's 18 pages for a sign or it's going to go by. Yeah. I think you actually even have some s definitions in there that aren't in the text. They aren't in the text, but if somebody says, well, what's this? Well, that's what this is. Well, you don't do anything with it. Well, you know, just in case. You know? Right. Because some people substitute language. The only thing that's missing, well, there's a couple of things missing. What we have uniquely, because of the lake, uh, situation here. There's a lot of private roads that have directory signs at the end of the road. That's illegal. Uh, can you make it legal? I'm not sure that the state DOT would allow it, but I think that you could address it locally by saying it has to be a private road and it can only be so big. Um, is, is, 
that illegal because it's in the state right away? No, because it's uh, uh, it's off premises. You know, because every property owner owns oh, their right. own land, uh -huh. and unless they share ownership of the road, if it's a kind of a development type of thing, maybe you can get around the right. law that way. But generally, it's an off premise site. I guess that's another one DOT doesn't enforce. <laughs> they don't enforce. <clears throat> but it, that would be a great one to put in the sign ordinance for Bell Gray because we have so many private roads. Yeah, true. You know, that's another good point. Uh, you know, real estate signs, you know, they always, the real estate uh, people, uh, uh, the Realtors Association would always want to tack this on to something that I wrote, that you could put a sign at the end of the road telling people there's a property for sale down the road. And I said, well, it really makes sense to do that, but it's off premises. And the DOT uh, would get their hands slapped and threatened by the Federal Highway Administration to take money away because they said, this is off-premises advertising, not controlled. Now that was the key, not controlled. So if you had a way of registering all of those off-premises real estate signs, maybe you could let it go. That would be the key uh, in that definition. That was the, the last definition I put in, that the private road had to either be a, a registered association recognized or registered at the town if it's not a registered association with the state. So it has to be an entity right. recorded someplace. Yeah. I think dealing with signs, mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm retired. But, <laughs> uh, but I think that this town could really benefit because you know the last thing you want to do is you talk about sprawl, uncontrolled, mm -hmm. this and that. You got properties that don't fall into that review going to get something else you don't want. Uh, there's a lot of uh, residential and rural properties that have signs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to control that too. You know, all zones, all, mm -hmm. all districts. And yeah. that map, you know, this map does a pretty good job of that, but uh, <clears throat> you don't do anything with it. Right. Peter, um, when you meet with the select board, uh, I, I think it in my thought. Um, I would have asked Gary if he'd been here, but you know, this is an or the sign ordinance is one that will fall largely on his shoulders, mm -hmm. with the exception of those projects that fall under commercial development review ordinance. Um, a legitimate question, or something the select board needs to understand, is that he'll be responsible for the permitting and he'll be responsible for the enforcement, and those are two new duties for him. Right. I mean, this is a man. This is a man that's already issuing all the. Uh, plumbing code permits and doing all those inspections as well as all the town ordinance at, at 15 hours a week. Right. It's a workload thing. And he's already resource constrained. Yeah. So. so, I mean, and it also plays into the discussion in the commercial development, uh, in the uh, comprehensive plan about the oh. need for full-time code enforcement Agreed. officer, of course. Agreed. And this could actually... Well, you have to start charging. You know, I, I think a minimum $50 Peter, if we're going to uh, adjourn, uh, I, there are two things I, I would like to see on the agenda for the next meeting. For our I, agenda? For our yeah. agenda, for, uh, if I may. Um, and both have to do with sort of improving uh, how we communicate to the public about what's going to be at our meetings yeah. with regard to our agendas. So um, I was, if we could talk about that, uh, I, it's not to discuss it in depth, here now, but you know, for example, having the our agendas in advance of the meeting on the website, emailing it to the same people that get the select board's agendas, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and also having our meetings not just bar buried in the bowels of the website, uh, but on the front page on the town calendar, like the appeals board and some of the other boards do. Anyway, if we could just talk about that at the next meeting. That's uh, so, so. This is not a criticism of, of no. all board. No, no. It's just a. It's something we talked about when Mary was here, and, and it just kind of got fell through the cracks. <clears throat> I did change some of that. I changed your guys' location on the website, and I also put you guys on the calendar. Oh, you did. Yes. Oh, okay. So thank you. Because last time I looked, it wasn't there, but yeah, it's on there now. It is yeah, okay. Sure. So, so maybe you could just maybe demonstrate to us how that works out. Yeah. But it, it, for now, let's just put it on the agenda yeah, no, so we can talk about it. It doesn't need to be a long discussion. But. And the second thing? 
Uh, that's all one and the same, basically. <laughs> That's why they told me it was six was the deadline. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, right, yeah. They, you know, they said, okay, well, how long do we have to turn this around? I said, oh, absolutely no later than the sixth. And just so you don't you know, feel like your, your time and effort's been wasted, I don't think it has. It's just a question of timing. Because right. we, we were talking about just the logistics of this, just so you understand. You know, like public hearings would be required for, for a signing ordinance, and you have to have two of them. That takes time because if there's, uh, you know, and before that even, so I'll let you back up, help me out. Let's go along. So you have to have preparation of the of the ordinance. So yeah. uh, however much time that happens or takes, <coughs> you have to have some type of recognition that it's acceptable to the select board. And then back to the planning board for some kind of the first public hearing. Are we good there? Then we go forward. And what would happen then? We have to do. Go back to the select board. Back to the select board, and then a second public hearing. Then you have to be ready for some kind of a warrant article. So you can chew up two months easy. Yeah. Well, and, and like we did with the commercial development review ordinance, at least I would suggest that we have a public informational meeting for the, the general public so and and for like the business community so that yeah. they can have their in, in, input because you get to the public hearing, you can't make any changes thereafter. So. Um, so so that's real important to, to talk about too because we did that for this ordinance. Well, Debbie, right? and so Debbie was supposed to send this draft out last week to all the businesses in the business group. I was anticipating that once we got the notice that we were going to be talking about it tonight, there would be somebody that would show up. Show up, you know. I talked to Mike Hammond. You know, he didn't come. You know, so it's like I'm not sure how much cooperation you're going to get except for people who don't like sign. Well. I'll tell you what I'm looking for is to make sure that we here follow ways to inform the taxpayers about what's going on. And so all I'm trying to do is say that when we go through the steps, that it takes an, an ungodly amount of time, more than you might expect. Well, maybe the first thing is a workshop to list all of the things and then put a timetable. Th that could be fine. That sounds like a good idea from a planning perspective. But just to just so we know that it takes time to do those things. So we talked about, you know, a public informational meeting. You know, there'd be adjustments. That's after all the work has been done. At that point, right? And then you start thinking about, oh, what are we getting down to crunch time to have select board? Then back to a public hearing. Then that need back to select board one more time, and we're good to go. Then back to the uh, public hearing, and then you're ready for a work article. That just takes a lot of time to, to get that all done um, and do it right. Because that the key thing is when you get ready to go to one article, like we talked about tonight, when it's finally approved by the select board, say this is the thing that's going, then the clock's done. Uh, so you're saying that the next vote actually is in November. Uh, this is 17 months. As far as I know, there's. I was told by Karen that it has. It's not this one. It's going to have to be next March. That's what Karen. Maybe that's, oh. maybe that's a thing. Oh. Is that for the same reason that the commercial development review ordinance was held until March rather Probably. than last November? Probably, yeah. Because I asked him what's going to be the next time that we'll be able to vote for votes yeah. next year. Because what, what we ran into with the commercial development review ordinance is there were going to be so many things on the ballot in November that it was going to be a real hardship on the staff in the town office to have the ordinance on the ballot at the same time. And we were kind of hoping, you know, maximize the number of voters that would vote on it, but uh, so consequently it was held into over until yeah. long. I can ask her again, but she, maybe she Well, that answer. could, yeah, that could be revisited possibly, yeah. um, depending on when things are done. But as an ordinance, uh, a new ordinance, mm -hmm. that would be mm -hmm. a secret mm -hmm. ballot and not be a town meeting kind of vote, right? Because this one that's coming up now is, not going to be a town meeting, it'll be a big thing. Right, the ballot. Right, because yeah. it's a warrant article, so mm -hmm. people vote it. Right. I mean, in a booth, we right. check it. Right. As opposed to standing up and saying, yeah, I agree. Right. Yeah. Well, that was my concern also, because
generally, this is a highly specialized topic. Most people have an opinion, and most people don't know what they're talking about. So, Biblical. so I think you know the actions really that have to occur now are going back to the select board to have a discussion about priorities and work, work, and then put things into context, mm -hmm. knowing that we already have things you know in the hopper right now, and how we how do we want to accomplish what what, what you and Denny have worked on? Well, all right. None of them have seen this, right? You haven't seen what? Seen these documents. So they, they don't know what you mean the select board? We, we've all seen it, of course. Yeah, they, they've all seen it. No, I said yeah, no, we So depending on what you want to do, I mean, if you want them to see what's been done, I'm not sure, based on what you're saying, that it's going to make any difference anyway. Actually, I did send it to all the select board. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, yeah, I don't know if they read it, but they were sent yeah. I'll send it in. I think that's the, the Peter, do you need any help from the rest of us? And Anybody who would like to come, I'd love to have some assistance. Can you do it February 7th? February 7th. 630. It's on the board out front. I saw it on the way in. There you go. On the sign? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the flashing one. I did stop, though. When I, uh, I had to wait for about a, a 45 seconds to get through all of them to come back to see <laughs> what I was reading. <laughs> You didn't get rear-ended, did you? No, no, I was looking behind me. I thought maybe Are you in the road? <laughs> so, so before we adjourn, are there any updates from anybody about anything else? No. Gary, as you know, is out sick today. I think I mentioned last time, or maybe I didn't, that Sean wrote to me and said he'd like to, he, he can't continue on anymore. Oh, he can't, so he's resigning? He's resigning. So, um, he is on staff. Well, I mean, we're in good, still in good hey, shape. With you want to get on the board? <laughs> Plenty board? Is it open? Uh, Is this here? Uh, Think about uh, it. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think he's already figured out that it isn't fun. <laughs> so, so Jerry, thank you. What's that? Thank you. Oh, thank you. No, this thing is fun. I think you're stopping down at that whole store down by your place.